Hi, I'm Vivek, one of the founders and CEO of HackerRank. Welcome to HackerRank AI Day 2025. We're going to be talking a lot about AI, impact on software engineering, AGI. But before that, just a quick preview of what we do at HackerRank. At HackerRank, we help companies attract, hire, and upskill developers and we've built a vibrant developer community where developers support each other in their careers. In 2024, we assessed over 3 million developers on HackerRank. That's about 30% of developers who changed jobs last year. We partner with over 2,500 companies across the globe, across sizes, from the stealth startup all the way to Fortune 500 organizations. And our developer community is 26 million developers strong. We come to work every day super energized to serve all of you. And know that you're participating in a much bigger mission, a movement to change the world to value skills over pedigree. And for that, a big kudos and thank you for your support and partnership. AI and AGI were some of the top trending topics over the last couple of years. But if you double click on it, you'd find something very interesting. Last year, the questions were, will we even get AGI? Is it even possible to recreate this? This year, the questions are, hey, when am I getting AGI? Is it this year? Is it 2026? Is it 2030? Just give me an ETA so that I can organize my life around it. That's such a stark change in sentiment just within a year. And we are going to explore the implications of AGI on society and our jobs. But before that, what is AGI really trying to achieve? This is a magical cell called as a neuron. And we have many billions of these in our head with many trillions of connections among them. AGI is trying to recreate this. Is it possible? Will we be able to do this? Let's take a look. Let's study the evolution of the human brain. 600 million years ago, there was an organism called as nematode that first exhibited a set of neurons. And it performed a very simple function. If there was food, it will ask the nematode to go forward. If there was a predator, it will ask it to go back. Otherwise, it's just going to instruct it to stay in the same place. A hundred million years later, with the evolution of fish, we first discovered that there were three distinct regions of the brain. The forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. In fact, 70% of our brain structure resembles that of the fish. A couple of hundred million years later, we had the evolution of hippocampus that gave us the superpower of spatial memory, the ability to map external spaces on our brain. This is the reason why you're able to navigate at home during the night with lights off. You exactly know where the closet is, where the bathroom door is, where the table is, thanks to hippocampus. And then came the big breakthrough of the neocortex that actually gave us reasoning skills, the ability to think about the future. And more recently, we had the prefrontal cortex recent at least with respect to this time scale, that gave us the construct of emotions and consciousness, thus making us a complete intelligent species. It's taken us a long time to get here, but we need to be grateful that we have the most advanced setup running in our head. In fact, it's so advanced that nobody has been able to deconstruct how the brain fully works yet. And a striking feature of the evolution of our brain is how our brain requires very low training data to perform 
highly generalizable tasks. What do I mean by that? For example, let's say you want to learn to drive a car. You hop into the car, you get an instructor, you're going to drive for maybe 50 miles, 60 miles, on the streets, on a couple of freeways, and you're good to go. You can drive anywhere. Conversely, if you wanted to build a self-driving car, you need to train that with millions of miles of data, fine-tune for corner cases, and it'll do a good job. But as impressive as the AI brain might be, it requires lots of training data for relatively low generalization as compared to humans. So when you put these two brains side by side, what you find is the characteristics of the human brain are low training data and high generalization, and the characteristics of the AI brain are high training data and low generalization, at least with relative to humans. These two are evolving on two different planes. The fusion of these two brains is going to unleash a whole new world of creativity. And that's why at HackerRank we believe the future is human plus AI. Now this kind of a fusion has happened in many industries. One of them you may be very familiar with in the aviation space. In the 1930s, the cockpit was composed of four people, the pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, and navigator. As AI got better, the navigator became optional. And as technology continued to get better, the flight engineer became optional. And today, we have the pilot and the co-pilot in the cockpit. In fact, 90% of your flight is flown by AI. But that doesn't mean that you can put anybody in the pilot seat. The demand for highly qualified pilots has not changed. The need for pilots to understand the fundamentals of aeronautical engineering has not changed. The job has changed. It's become much more of an orchestrator of AI tools and machinery. And now that AI isn't an esoteric thing that's only available to the aviation industry, I mean, it's present in everyone's pockets, we are going to see a similar kind of an evolution happen to all of our professions. If you took a look at the evolution of AI tools in the last two years, it started off as chatbots, then got integrated as helpful assistance to the apps that we use on a daily basis, Gmail, GitHub Copilot, Grammarly. And today, the AI tools have taken on to be in the shape of an agent, where you're saying, hey, why don't you go do the work and let me know when you're done and I will review it. This is going to change the nature of all of our jobs. And we're gathered here to talk about a specific type of a profession called as a software developer. The job of a software developer is best encapsulated by these six things, also known as the software development lifecycle. You gather requirements, you architect systems, you write code, you test them, you deploy, and you maintain. Now, as AI agents become more capable and reliable, a lot of these are going to be done by the AI agent. And the job of a developer becomes an orchestrator of these AI agents. It's going to be more of reviewing the work than doing the work. If this is the future, I have two predictions on how the software industry is going to change. My first one, developers will do more of software development and less of programming. 
Wait, what? Is there even a difference? Programming is the ability to convert a spec that's written in natural language to a programming language that has its own syntax and grammar. Software development, on the other hand, encompasses a whole set of things that I shared in the slide earlier. The ability to deeply understand the problem space, the ability to communicate clearly to clarify the spec, to architect well, to ensure your software works across all browsers and operating systems, to make it accessible, to make it responsive, have really good documentation, and so many other elements go into the art of software development. As AI gives developers more leverage, you're gonna find that developers increasingly do more of and enjoy doing more of software development and less of programming. This changes what you look for in a developer. And that's why we've engineered our skill platform to be able to teach and assess skills that are beyond just programming, such as doing test-driven development, the ability to work with an AI agent, code quality, etc. The next generation of developers are going to look very different. We're going to help nurture them and help companies hire and upskill them you're gonna see us innovate a lot on this dimension. My second prediction, we all know software or SaaS as software as a service. With AI, this is gonna get flipped to be service as a software. When you think about software, you think about it as a productivity tool that's going to make it easier to do your job. When you think about a service, you think about it as doing your job. And if you look at the modern set of products and applications that are coming out, you would find this to be a through line. When Salesforce launched Agent Force, this was not just a CRM 2.0, this is effectively you hiring agents who can do the job for you, who'll go ahead and research prospects and fill in the database with the appropriate entries. Or when Sierra launches a customer support help desk, it's not just another help desk software, it's giving you the ability to train AI agents to answer support tickets. Or Devin is helping you hire a developer agent at least a junior developer for now. And Tesla, as much as it's a car company, it's really helping you hire a driver. The next generation of software is gonna have AI and machine learning at its core. It's gonna increasingly look like services packaged as a software. So we ask this question ourselves. What services would our customers and developers want from us? And here were a few things that popped up. A career coach to help developers get their dream job. An interviewer that can interview inbound applicants on behalf of your engineering team. A proctor who can sit in front of a candidate while taking a test to ensure fairness and integrity. A tutor that is personalized and contextual that can adapt to my learning style. In 2025, you're going to find HackerRank not only innovate on the platform layer, but also on the product and application layer, where we're going to increasingly give these services packaged as a software. 2025 is going to be a tremendous year of innovation at HackerRank, and I can't wait to get all of this in front of you. We've spoken a lot about AI. We talked about how the human brain is different from the AI brain, but we also talked about how agents are going to do parts of our job. I'm sure there's a question at the back of your mind. 
So Vivek, all of this is really cool, but can you just answer this simple thing? Are we going to have jobs or not? You know, every technology revolution does three things. It makes some jobs go away, it changes the shape of existing jobs, and it creates new kinds of jobs. AI is a technology and is going to do the same. The best way to remain on the right side of history is to embrace AI. And if you're a developer, just know that the developer community at large reached a very important milestone recently. Today, we have over 150 million developers in the world. And in fact, the graph gets steeper as AI's adoption increases. Very different from the social media narrative of how AI is going to replace developers, it's going to be a doomsday scenario. In fact, I have a counter opinion. There is no better time than now to be a developer. There is no better time than now for your organizations to reinvent yourselves by hiring and upskilling the next generation of developers. Embrace AI, focus on your skills, and let's work together to build a future that is human plus AI. Thank you.